1986, I was greatly inspired in the bird variation of the Rye Lopez as Black. Black won some brilliant games with some really nice strategic and attacking uh, concepts, and uh, it, I've incorporated in my repertoire and I played the, the bird three to four times and uh, did very well with it and uh, and then the empire struck back and uh, sort of uh, made this variation unplayable so this is a short romance in my chess career where I had a uh, big crush on an opening and then it disappointed me and left me uh, like disappointed and yeah I don't know a little bit depressed uh, but this is something that happens I also had a love affair with the dragon variation and uh, and so on and the Aljechen variation in the Dutch and uh, all other things uh, and this is what what happens you you get inspired you get fired up and then you realize ah maybe it's not that clear maybe it's not so so much fun and uh, there are some problems too so let's get into it this is the uh, these are two great uh, classical games that sort of mark the the beginning and the end of the reign of the bird variation it has of course been played since uh, in the first game uh, Vichy Anand uh, is it is in 1986 he is playing white against Vitali Tchaikovsky, uh, Russian uh, grandmaster, who was also the trainer of Kramnik and had a great chess understanding. Knight d4. This is the bird variation. And I've always felt that this was weird because what I don't like about uh, the bird variation, of course, you solve the problem with the knight here immediately, uh, but you get some other problems. And one of the problems is that you are missing this pawn, so white has um, simply more pawns on the queen side, and um, and that can be a problem. That will uh, lead to some white side king side attack. But okay, let's see why this was uh, temporary, uh, very popular. Bishop c5. The, by the way, this pawn can also become weak. D3, c6. Pushing the knight, and um, and here comes the move that sparked uh, the interest. Take, take, uh, and this looks really, really weird. What is going on here? There are uh, double pawns, isolated double pawns in the middle of the board, and uh, by all standards, this should be bad. By the way, I had a game where they played bishop b5. I had both played bishop d7, which is okay, and king f8, and I won both games. Bishop b3. Knight e7, rook e1, all natural castle, knight e2. And now comes the move that really uh, made me uh, look and get very interested. Because the thing is, as, as we see it, white has, okay, this bishop is sort of out of the game, but it is threatening the pawn. But, but these pieces are pretty good, and they have an open file, and black has, uh, has this horrible weakness here, and so on. But they also give him space. And space often means attacking chances. Space often means attacking chances. So uh, what to do here as black? And that's this is the instruction moment. A5. Okay. There, it looks like a little uh, simple beginner's thing. Threatening to trap the bishop. But what about A4? Okay. Bishop B4 is, is, is kind of cool. Uh, preventing the knight from going here. Um, Queen F3. So, and what, what now? How to develop uh, the pieces? By the way, black is, is already fine, but what I really liked about the, this game was this move. Oh, that's so nice, isn't it? This kind of uh, rook uh, here. It's, it's what you do as a beginner, right? You, you put your h pop because but that's because you don't, you're a little bit unsure how the knight and the bishops uh, move, but the rook is simple. Eh? It goes whoop, whoop, whoop. But here, this is, is so cool. So the rook is coming and uh, is giving up a pawn, and now there are problems here. And black has a, a great initiative already. Uh, rook at what? C5. And, uh, and 
basically white is in some kind of trouble here rooks coming and winning the exchange and the rest is, is simple so this this made a, a big impression on me yeah so that was that game so this move and this move and uh, I managed to play this in one game and which I won so and I've never ever forgot this maneuver I'm sure you will not forget it, get it either that this sometimes happens you just there is an open uh, space here on this uh, six rank and you just go a5 and get the rook up and so on it of course happens more often with white going here okay but here, of course, black is uh, winning. Uh, he's white is simply the exchange up, and, uh, and that's that's no real compensation for it. So let's uh, also, if if there is a check somewhere down here, it will spell trouble for uh, black or white. Anyway, uh, let's see the other game. We're just gonna flip the board and take on the next game. We're not gonna we're not gonna save it, um, and then. Of course, this move is not the refutation of the Ray Lopez or Spanish opening. So the, this basket game was in 1986. This game is in 1987 in New York. White is uh, former world champion Boris Spassky. And, um, and he played a little bit better than an ant. He also had like 200 rating points more. Castle is fine. D3 is fine. C6. And here instead of bishop C4, he went to A4. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's, what's the big difference? The thing is, of course, you can't do this and take back with the pawn. Uh -huh. So you, you don't get this kind of space. Uh, okay, that's one thing. Now. Maybe that's not so so important. Uh, 97 makes sense. Get, uh, finishing development, maybe getting ready to play d5 and take back with a knight and, and be okay. Uh, and here it's a uh, it's white to move. And here comes uh, the move that really uh, made me not want to play this variation anymore. F4, just using the space to um, to get going here black could play f5 but that will lead to serious weakness of the white square and here you can analyze a lot uh, i don't like this as black it might be playable but it feels ugh, i don't i don't trust this stuff so but but baru played f5 and and ran into this move and this is kind of the kind of thing we really don't like uh, with black because uh, this make this one having big trouble getting out this one big trouble getting out and um, and something nasty is gonna happen over here right we can just feel it is uh, pieces could come here queen here or here or whatever and uh, this is this is scary stuff and of course you could play d3 here but he's just gonna play d3 king check but he's just gonna play this and that's nothing you, you he's not gonna exchange queens and you will have problems getting these pieces out and if you take here you open for this guy and uh, i'm sure f7 will be a weak spot so he castle um she took took and castle and bishop b3 here it comes bishop d6 to try and get something here but this is a uh, the kind of guy like Spassky knows that, well, to get squares, you're going to give squares. And he doesn't care about the e5 square uh, because he's going to kill black on the king side. So um, queen a5 is already looking uh, pretty damn uh, dangerous. Uh, we, we can see this is coming and something bad is just going to happen. So he played this, bishop e5, rook f3. Getting ready to uh, to get the the party started, and um, and here a check, and and Spassky is 
is having fun here. He was a very, very, very strong attacker uh, in his youth. And uh, here he shows that he can still attack in 1987. Uh, some of the best attacking games ever it was played by Spassky. So uh, check him out. He's a, he's a pretty good player. He became a little bit uh, too happy with draws later. But um, that's how it goes. Rook a3, threatening mate in one move. Uh, if he play, moves the rook, it's going to be mate in like three moves. Uh, and maybe I should just show this... Um, here, you're not going to take this one because then maybe not mate, but here, here, and here's the very standard thing because this diagonal has been cleared and after this it's mate. So that's, in, and that's something a grandmaster will, you can wake him up in the middle of the night and he will see this like this. Uh, this is, is easy to see. So, okay, 8-6, absolutely uh, necessary. No more uh, bullshit. If if he, can, he takes here, you just go back, so there's no check, and uh, it's made in, in a few moves. So bishop d4, king h2. Okay, um, the same applies here. If he takes here, just go back, and it's gonna be made. You can't take here. Oops, that that you can by the way just take uh, because uh, of this this pin. Uh, so the knight can't take back. So, um, and, and something like this is just going to be made into in very few moves. And remember, look at this. This is very elegant. It's, it's covering here. So, queen f2 does threaten this move, but just knight c3, keeping this one alive. Take, and of course knight takes, you can just give here check, and it's going to be made in two moves. So... Bishop a3, and this is the, the kind of the cool stuff about it is that Spassky must have seen uh, this here, that uh, there is no check here due to this one. So before we saw that there was no check on c1 due to queen h1, but uh, here it's, it's all uh, pretty simple. Um, yes, let's see. And um, in this position, he played queen f6 and bishop e3, and Spassky gave up, or Barua gave up. Uh, the problem is, um, is, is threatening to take on d4 and put mate. It's of course threatening mate here, so you have to do something about that. If you do this, um, then uh, this is, is absolutely hopeless. Just gonna push the uh, queen away and play rook g1. Uh, later, and if you go some like this, you can just yeah, you can play rook d1. Uh, you can so probably also take and it's gonna win as well because these uh, pieces are better. But rook d1 is probably the easiest solution to that. Um, so this game with this f5 made me lose all faith in this line, and I gave it up. So it was a short romance. Uh, I fell in love very quickly and hard, and uh, and it all went away again. This is how it goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of nostalgic uh, video about um, my young career in 1986 and 87. I was um, I was 15 and 16, so I was not not so old. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.